yeah, there are several yeah, packages you can use to improve the performance um, using, for example, multiple <coughs> nodes um, in a private network, like where you have installed Snow or RMPI. Um, I think this is maybe more the old world. Now you have Hadoop and uh, you can use it with R Hadoop and uh, do map reduce jobs. Um, I know Snow and RMPI five, six years ago from my work at university and it, it's nearly the same like Hadoop. You have to do more manually stuff um, <coughs> and then Hadoop you have some automation. Um, yeah, you can use, if you use only your um, laptop, you can use packages on one node, uh, like multicore or fork, um, where you can parallelize some, some parts. Um, and you can scale up, and this is the topic of my talk, um, using the GPU. Um, there's a package GPU tools. Um, it's yeah, it had more functionality when I used it the first time, now they reduced some things. Because they have um, maybe some yeah, data, some, some, some needs inside. Um, there's another picture I wanted to try its output. Um, it has an SVM implementation, which is not in GPU tools um, when I first used it. And there's OpenCL. And, um, yeah. I will show you the difference between OpenCL and CUDA. GPU tools is uh, based on CUDA, um, which is supported by most of um, the consumer laptops or here on my MacBook there is a graphic card from NVIDIA which supports CUDA. So I, I will use this GPU tools. Um, you can view a lot of um, packages about high performance computing on this. Um, our project view high performance computing. Um, yeah, using GPU had um, yeah changed a lot in, in several applications like speech recognition, computer vision, and bioinformatics. Um, this is a place where I got in touch with um, yeah GPU computing because one of my former colleagues is working at Google in speech recognition area and um, yeah he, he told me that the algorithm they used uh, changed a lot by using the GPU and improved they, they could use algorithms they, they couldn't use before and <coughs> it improved the results of the um, acoustic modeling and the feature extraction a lot using the GPU so um, yeah this was the place where I got in touch with it and I was um, interested in it to use the GPU. Um, then I, then I um, yeah, looked further and uh, googled a lot about it and um, I found out that it's used a lot in uh, deep learning. I don't know if you have heard about it. It's, um, you use neural networks um, for feature extraction, so you train your neural network only for feature extraction. So, for example, you have a picture um, and you, yeah, you, you want to get features out of the picture, like the um, borders, um, the contour of, of an image, um, like you see below, um, this uh, picture of the wolves. And um, <coughs> so you, you, the picture goes, um, will be smaller and smaller. And after all, you have maybe a representation of six, uh, of, of maybe a tenth of the original picture and in deep learning you um, can conclude to the original picture from the from the small um, from the small representation like it's, it's ten, ten times smaller and um, this all uses a deep learning and neural networks which um, does a lot of matrix <coughs> multiplications and matrix multiplications are really um, made for using with the GPU. <coughs> so it's a big improvement in this area um, to use the GPU because it's, it's really fitted to neural networks. 
And yeah, the problem is, okay, in, in R, generally we, we don't do a speech recognition or something like this, but um, I wanted to try it out. Um, yeah. So in, in general, um, GPU computing, the yeah, advantages, you have a lot of cores on your graphic card. Um, a thousand of cores, because gaming industry developed a lot of uh, powerful graphic cards and advanced it. And then they had the idea, okay, you can use it, you can make the cores programmable and uh, make, it, make it available to um, yeah, other uh, <coughs> tasks and topics, not only for graphics. Um, and in the standard setting, now you combine CPU computing and GPU computing and um, yeah, can do a lot of parallelization. And um, so for example NVIDIA, um, yeah, where the most gaming graphic cards um, come from, um, they de developed um, an API for the GPU and they developed APIs for different um, yeah, languages for C, OpenCL, Fortran, and Java, and Python. And um, in R, you can use, of course, the C API and build packages upon it. So you can use the <coughs> NVIDIA CUDA C API in R and build your own packages. Um, or you can use a, um, already existing um, C implementation which uses the GPU and build your um, R package upon it. Okay, so CUDA is a one um, implementation or one API from NVIDIA, so it runs only on NVIDIA graphic cards. Um, but there is an open standard, it's, it's called OpenCL. It's um, developed by AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA. Um, it can achieve the same performance, but CUDA has more major tools like profiling, debugging, and easy to use APIs. So that's the reason it's um, used more often. And um, yeah, I think OpenCL will, will catch up with um, CUDA sometime, but currently CUDA is more popular. Um, the advantage of uh, OpenCL is that it supports uh, CPU computing, GPU computing and several other platforms in parallel. So you can choose during development <coughs> which platform your code should run. Um, and this is again a task for NVIDIA. They want to close this gap also that there are um, Applications on, don't run only on the GPUs, on, so also on the um, CPU. So there are some some difference between these two frameworks. Um, and today I will show you the GPU tools which uses uh, CUDA, um, which is available on my MacBook here. And um, yeah, I had to be careful. It was um, not easy to to get it running and. Sometimes um, it crashes in MacBook, so um, <laughs> and you can if you have no <coughs> graphics anymore, it's uh, difficult <laughs> to to build something more. Um, so GPU tools um, deliver some methods from linear algebra, um, <coughs> like matrix multiplication, um, correlation, co computing. Correlation conditions, <coughs> um, performing matrix cross products, um, distance computation between vectors, and computation of generalized linear models, um, and several other methods. And you can use this method um, like you use the R methods. It's the same name most times, only with a GPU in front, and they behave the same. So the first um, task was to get it running on my MacBook. Um, there's a description on, on the home page or on the R package page 
but it didn't work on my MacBook, um, so I had to um, make some changes in my Mac file. I just included the slides you know, uh, for, for later on if you get the slides and want to get one. So, um, yeah, it was not easy to get it running, but after all, it did it. And, um, yeah, this was the first, um, first R script I ran. So, um, yeah, you can print the GPU ID, this is the ID of your graphic card, and then you um, can use the um, method, like um, a common R method, and it's the same syntax like uh, GLM, it's only called GPU GLM. You can uh, give it a formula and the common parameters of GLM and do yeah, some statistics about it. Um, yeah, so the interesting part is how was or how is the performance compared to the standard GLM or other um, methods. So I compared some uh, correlation <coughs> computation um, and changed the size of the samples. <coughs> um, and you see a system time of GPU method and the system time of the normal standard R method. <laughs> you see the correlation computation of in the standard R package is, is faster than the GPU package. <laughs> so, <coughs> Yeah, you had to increase the sample size because it's, um, as I show you later on in benchmarks, um, the problem is you have to get the data from your memory to the GPU. And um, this is a fixed cost. And it, um, so to, to benefit from the um, GPU, um, yeah, you have to, to have large matrices. So that the fixed cost is, is so small, it doesn't matter afterwards. So um, yeah, I, I increased the metric size, but my GPU was not uh, big enough or good. I had not much run, so uh, it crashed <laughs> after increasing the metric size to 200,000. And even the garbage collection or something is, isn't working well, so um, or there's a memory leak inside of GPU tools. So. Um, I could use afterwards only smaller matrices uh, after the first time. So <laughs> it's not really um, stable yet and not, maybe not well implemented. Um, yeah, that's just a demonstration that it works. Um, so here I show I increased the sample size to 200,000 and then there was an error message that the um, allocation of memory um, has, has an error because um, memory was put on the GPU. And GPU here on my MacBook has, I think, two gigabytes of one. And yeah, maybe in the future the GPU will be more performant. <coughs> so what you can do um, if you have problems, this is a pro part for um, NVIDIA and CUDA. Um, you have a profiling. Um, it's a profiling tool called NVDP. You can start it and load the R script or every application you want to run, the script you want to run. Open it in, in this uh, profiling tool. It's a kind of Eclipse <coughs> um, tool. And um, then you see where is my time, where is my time gone, how much fixed cost do I have um, transferring the data to the memory of, of the GPU and you see the output of the GPU uh, of the script below and yeah it's it's a quite good profiling tool um, I thought I, I see the, the error I got um, in this tool but <laughs> I didn't see it there but um, yeah I don't know here in, um, I could use a bigger sample size using this profiling tool so I don't know what the problem was with the GPU tools implementation. Maybe they um, evaluated the error of the CUDA API. Not, not, not right. I don't know. A quick, quick question. Enable, uh, to enable this uh, visual profile, do you have to recompile it or do you just run it? No. Um, this is um, included in the CUDA framework. This profile. For profile, you have to enable it and compile it. 
problems. And you, as I showed to you before, you just the profiler gets just the name of the script mm -hmm. to execute it, and it, it runs inside of this profiler, okay. and it adds some maybe some uh, macros inside. You see this this red bars, small bars. It's it's the overhead of the profiler, so it, it's just. Activate some macros maybe inside of the API. Yeah, and um, so this is the profiler. Um, and you see also here that you get some nice statistics. So um, it tells you that you don't. Use the GPU fully. It's, it's it's idle most of the time when you run your algorithm. So it's what it was not a good example maybe, but I didn't find some better. Um, yeah. And you see here this is transfer from your local memory to the GPU. It took some 922 milliseconds. And you had to transfer the data back. And it also sometimes, so this is a fixed cost you have using the GPU. Okay, so, um, yeah. I didn't have the time to compute some benchmarks or, and not the hardware. And there was a, is a good benchmark avail paper available. Um, and it's also an R package. GCDD package um, that runs some benchmarks automatically. And it was very interesting because it um, compared several last impl implementations. These are, these are implementations for linear algebra computation in C um, with the GPU. And I found out there that there are some interesting implementations I can use in R maybe in the future. Because this go to glass, for example, um, <coughs> performed better in most um, experiments than the GPU. So, th these are the results of the benchmark. Um, he, you don't see so much, maybe, but this um, line, so on the x, x axis, axis, you have the matrix dimension, so the matrix dimension increases from left to right and the time increases uh, exponential. Um, to compute, um, for example, here is this matrix multiplication. Um, and you see the best performing um, package or yeah, implementation for this um, method or algorithm is this go-to blast implementation. Um, and the GPU is only here, let's see, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> but what is really interesting is this, um, if you have it on a log um, scale, you see the fixed cost effect of the GPU. The GPU has higher cost for small matrices, but it doesn't increase um, so much with um, bigger matrix dimension. As, as the other packages. So you can expect that you benefit from the GPU somewhere <coughs> here. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, okay, as it's really shown in this experiment that GPU performance is better with a big sample sizes or metrics. So, what was interesting for me was really that sorry, this go-to package performs so well and better than the standard implementation for linear algebra. Um, so I will give it a try. Um, and you find here a link to a page where someone showed how to use this go-to plus implementation with R. With R. You have to configure R to use this implementation, implementation instead of the standard. Um, yeah, what's interesting also with the GPU, it's uh, the cheapest gigaflop per dollar um, available. 
it's difficult to debug if you have problems, run into problems. Um, and hardware like your laptop is only suited maybe for development and if you want to run it in production um, you have to get a bigger GPU. And um, there's only a limited range of R packages supporting GPU. Yeah, and the methods are not uh, very stable in this term. But okay, it was an interesting experiment and maybe the topic will advance in the future and we can use it.